Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we have the dielectric vertically instead of horizontally, which in essence gives us two capacitors. We can think of this as two separate capacitors in series rather than in parallel. And since we're going to be adding capacitors in series, we have to use the one over rule, or since there's only two pieces, we can use the product over the sum rule. But how do we approach this? Well, the way to do that is to first find the electric field in each of the two pieces of the capacitor. So what we're going to do is as follows. We first find the electric field. Then from the electric field, we're going to find the potential difference across each of the two sections of the capacitor. And then the plan is to express the capacitance in terms of the charge divided by the voltage for each piece. And so you can see then once we have that for one and two, we can unplug it into the equation. So that's the that's the way we want to solve this. So first, we're going to find the electric field in each of these two places. So the electric field in one and the electric field in portion two. And we know the definition of the electric field is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, except if there's a dielectric in there, we also have to take into account the dielectric constant. So we'll write it like this, which then can be written as the uh, not the area, that would be the charge on top. Got the wrong variable at the top. So that would be equal to the charge divided by K1 epsilon sub naught times A. And in the same way, we can find the electric field for the second portion. So this would be equal to Q divided by K2 epsilon sub naught times A. So now we have the electric field of both portions. Next, we want to find the potential difference across each section. And we know that Let's see here, the uh, voltage or the potential difference, V1, would be equal to the electric field in that region times the distance. And so in this case, that would be D divided by 2 because each dielectric is only half the width of the capacitor. Now, if you had a different ratio, like 1 third and 2 thirds, then of course you would use 1 third D and 2 thirds D for the two sections. Now, plugging in what E1 is equal to, so this becomes equal to Q times D divided by 2k1 epsilon sub naught times a. Same for v2, so v2 would be equal to e2 times d over 2. So in this case, this is qd over 2k2 epsilon sub naught times a. So now we want to find the capacitance. Hmm. The way to do that is to do the following. So we're going to go ahead and use this equation right here and express the capacitance in terms of Q over V in each case. So what we can do then is we're going to say C1 is equal to Q divided by V1, which is equal to Q divided by, so I'm going to write this like Q D over 2 K2 epsilon sub naught A. And then notice the Q's cancel out. And then this can go to the numerator, so this can then be written as C1 is equal to 2K2 epsilon sub naught A times 1 over D. Now we can do this for C2. C2 is going to be written as Q over V2, which is going to be written as Q over, and that would be Q d over 2, oh, I got the wrong subscript here. This is k1, k1 because I'm dealing with c1. Good thing that I caught that. Okay, this is c1. And here we have k2, because now we're looking for c2, times epsilon sub naught times a. And so this can then be written as 2 k2 epsilon sub naught a times, again, 1 over d. So the only difference between C1 and C2 is the dielectric constant right here. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and take this equation and write that the total capacitance is equal to the product C1, C2 divided by the sum C1 plus C2. So in this case, that's going to be C1. And I think what I'm going to do is factor out a K1. So this will be K1 times uh, 2 epsilon sub naught A over D. 
Do I have everything here? One, two, three, four. Yep, there we go. Two, one. So I have K1, I have two epsilon sub naught A and D times K2. And then we have C1. Oh, no. I don't want C1. I want C2. So that will be two epsilon sub naught A over D divided by the sum. So I'm going to factor out a K1 and K2. So I end up with K1 plus K2 times 2 epsilon sub naught A over D. And I only had one of those, each with a K1 plus K2. So that works. So now I can cancel this one with this one. And now what I end up with is this is equal to K1 times K2 over K1 plus K2 multiplied times 2 epsilon sub naught A, and of course that's the wrong E there. How about epsilon sub naught like this? divided by d. And if you want to separate that, you may want to be able to, may want to write as two times the quantity k1, k2 over k1 plus k2 times epsilon sub naught a over d. So you can see this is how we can now interpret that. Notice that this portion right here, that's why I wrote it separately like that, this portion right here would be the capacitance of this capacitor with a certain amount of charge on it if there was no dielectric at all. Since we have a dielectric, if there was only one dielectric covering the entire capacitor, call it K, then this whole thing would simply be replaced by just K. But since there's two dielectrics and they're vertically oriented so that we have two portions of that in series, then the K is now replaced by two times the product, K1 times K2 divided by K1 plus K2. And that will give you the capacitance of a capacitor with that type of dielectric arrangement. And that's how it's done.